In today's video, we're going to focus on multiplying decimals by powers of 10. Now remember, powers of 10 are numbers that, when 10 is raised to any power, you'll get. So, such as 10 to the power of 1 is just 10. So 10 is its own, is a power of itself. Then we've got 10 to the power of 2, which is 100. So 100 is a power of 10. And 10 to the power of 3, which is 1,000. So we're going to be focusing on working with powers of 10 today. To start off with, we are going to work with 5 and 76 hundredths times 10. Now, when we are multiplying by a power of 10, and it's important to notice that it is only with powers of 10 this work. If it isn't a power of 10, we can't do this trick. You take your decimal and you move it one space to the right. So our decimal will move here. And our answer will end up being 57 and 6 tenths. That's all there is to it. Look at your power of 10, and then we're going to move the decimal. Let's try a different one. With this example, we have 12 and 845 thousandths times 100. Now, when it was 10, we just moved the decimal one place to the right. So it would have gone here. But since we have 100, we move it twice. And we end up with our decimal right there. So our answer is 1,284 and 5 tenths. Pretty simple, right? I hope so. So give this next one a try on your own. I'm going to give you a different number, but see if you can figure out what happens. All right, so try your knowledge at this problem, 5 and 763 thousandths times 1,000. Think about what happened when we multiplied by 10 and then we multiplied by 100. What do you think is going to happen when we multiply by 1,000? Pause the video, give it your best shot. Well, when we multiply by 1,000, we move the decimal place 1, 2, 3 spaces to the right this time. And some people like to think, oh, I've got three zeros, so I'm going to move it three places. That's one way you can think of it. It works. So our answer ends up being 5,763. Now, some people might be thinking, but what if we don't have enough numbers in our original factor to move places with? Well, let's take a look at this next example. All right, in this example, we have 1 and 4 tenths times 100. Well, we know from before, when we multiply by 100, we have to move the decimal two spaces to the right. With this problem, it's no exception. But the problem is, we only have one number to jump. Well, we have to do a second jump, and this creates kind of a little gap here. The decimal still goes at the end of this jump, but we fill in this gap with a zero. So our answer becomes 140. And we have the decimal point at this end, and we could even make it 140 and 0 tenths. It doesn't change the value if we put that final 0 in. If you don't want to put it in, you don't have to. You could also just think of it as 140, and that would be perfectly fine. Try your hand at adding those zeros in. This time I've given you 2 and 7 tenths times 1,000. Pause the video, see what your answer is going to come up as when you move the decimal. Well, we have to move the decimal three times because we're at a thousand and we've got three zeros. So let's move it. We move it once, move it twice, even though we don't have a number there, and move it a third time, even though the number isn't there. So we've got two gaps that we're going to fill in with zeros. And our answer is 2,700. Or, if you want to put the zero, or the decimal at the end, 2,700 and zero tenths. But what happens if we're not multiplying by a multiple of ten like a thousand, but we're multiplying by one tenth? Well, let's see what happens. So we have, let's say, 27 times one tenth. Now, 27 is a whole number, so any whole number can have a decimal at the end of it. So I'm going to actually rewrite this as 27 and 0 tenths, because it doesn't change the value. 27 is the same thing as 27 and 0 tenths. 
times one tenth. So let's think about what happens here. When we multiplied by ten, we moved the decimal place to the right. What do you think is going to happen when we multiply by one tenth? Well, if you thought to yourself, we moved the decimal to the left, you'd be correct. So we're going to take the decimal here and move it between the 2 and the 7. We move it one space to the left, and our answer ends up being 2 and 7 tenths. There we go. Multiplying by 10 moves our decimal to the right. Multiplying by 1 tenth moves it to the left. Let's try another just to make sure we've got this. So this time I've given you 86 and 43 hundredths times 1 tenth. Well, what do we say happens when we multiply by 1 tenth? Our decimal is going to move one space to the left. So I'll move it here, and our answer ends up being 8 and 643 thousandths. But, hmm, we used 100 when we multiplied earlier. What happens if we change this to 1 hundredth instead of 1 tenth? Well, just like before with 100 adding or making us jump two spaces to the right, one hundredth is going to make us jump two spaces to the left. So instead of having eight and six hundred forty-three thousandths, we'd end up with, with our decimal moving all the way to there, zero and eight thousand six hundred forty-three ten thousandths. That's a small number, but that's okay. Hope you've enjoyed this and are better at moving your decimal places when multiplying decimals by powers of 10.